joining me tonight. We are continuing on the Grand Legacy block from the Splendid Sampler 2. Uh, we're getting there. I, we're definitely going to finish the cup tonight, and I'd like to get as far as I can on the text. So that is the plan for this evening. And then next week, um, I will not be on location at my parents' house anymore. Uh, next week, we will be stitching up the Hummingbird block. This is our embroidery of the month. Uh, so uh, keep a look out for that. Uh, we'll be stitching that up next week. So all right, again, tonight, working on the Grand Legacies block. So thanks for joining me here, you guys. Uh, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, uh, typically on YouTube and Facebook, uh, although tonight we're just on YouTube. I'm on location at my uh, parents' house. I'm in my mom's craft room slash laundry room slash computer room. <laughs> uh, and, and all right, so let's get stitching tonight. Nice seeing everyone pop in here. Okay, so here we are. There we go. So here is the Grand Grand Legacies Grand Legacy block. It's on page uh, 93 of the Splendid Sampler 2 book. So here we go. We're working through the Splendid Sampler 2. There's a hundred different blocks. This is from the template in the back. And uh, uh, I've just been having it nearby just in case I need to check any of my lines that I traced uh, earlier this week. So, all right, let's keep going. I'm I'm doing everything in the the blue thread. I think it's just been looking so pretty with just the blue. And we're doing the loop method of starting our floss. So I'm taking, uh, it'll ultimately be two strands, but I'm just taking one really long strand and folding it in half to make to make the two. Thanks for popping in, everyone. Oh, Joe says I really like my mystery gift. Oh, yes. So, you guys, uh, let me know if you got the mystery gift. So, we were, we will be continuing our mystery gift. Uh, if when you're checking out, you'll see a little in our in our shop, penguinfish.com. You'll see a little a little line of text underneath your items that say that says um, add a mystery gift. And uh, a few guys did that. So we will be changing those up all the time. Um, sometimes it'll be more than one thing. We'll be doing a bunch of different stuff for that, for that mystery gift. All right, so I just want to crank through the rest of this shape. We'll try and get the rest of this. That might be more than one skein of floss, I'm thinking, or more than um, one round of floss. Ooh, I forgot. I, I kind of tightened this in here again. I'm going to loosen it by just kind of putting my hand on it, just kind of pushing down uh, there. It's much more loose in the hoop. That makes it a lot easier for me to do the sewing method, which I'm trying to practice with this block. So sewing method is going in and out at the same time. And it's, it's easier. Uh, it's easier when your fabric is more loose. All right. So I'm going to Put the thread behind the needle. There we go, and pull all the way through. And that'll be the first part of the single chain stitch, and then just going right onto the other side to attach the little thread there. All right, let's do the back stitch for, for this little guy. So I hope everyone had a lovely day. It was Hot and humid here again, although there was a little bit of a breeze and it was slightly less, less um, hot. So that was nice. Oh, Shirley said, yes, I got the mystery gift and love it. Oh, cool, yay. Look forward to next week. Oh, and the raccoon piece, yes. So we do have that raccoon sampler as well, which is a free pattern. It's also available as a, as a kit. Um, I'd love to stitch that one of these days uh, as well. You know, we have a free week coming up. We could do it during the free week. It'll probably take a little bit longer than a week, but we can um, work on it then. Actually, you know what? I think, I think, um, is it this month? I think this month we might have like a double free week or maybe that's next month. I think that's next month that we kind of have, uh, 
we have a weird month where uh, one month crosses over to the other in the middle of a week, so um, we kind of stick to full weeks for our projects, so that might be an extra full week. I think that's actually next week, so I don't know. We'll have to schedule when we'll do the the uh, raccoon, so we'll take a look at that next week and see if we can schedule something. But yeah, it'd be awesome to give that a go. I'd love to stitch that with you. All right, we got these three little French knots here. Just kind of starting at the bottom of this and working my way up. Gotta hang out with Chad today. Um, a few of us went kayaking. I did not go kayaking today, uh, but I sat on the shore with Chad and watched um, watched uh, people kayak, so that was kind of fun. Chad the kitty. And we, we saw um, some monarch caterpillars today. So mom collected, mom and dad collected some of those. Oh, Joe said it stormed again this afternoon in central Wisconsin. Rain and hail. Oh my gosh. So we're a little further, a little further south. So like on the 29 corridor, is that kind of where... All the hail was, oh gosh, I didn't realize that. I'm gonna have to, well, we'll have to watch the news or something later and, ugh, well, I hope um, there wasn't much damage or anything. That's not fun. We also played some Settlers of Catan today. That's that, just like one of those crazy in-depth board games um, with strategy and all that sort of stuff that's kind of popular now. We played the Game of Thrones version of that, so I think we're, we got a little bit of that left over. Oh, about 20 minutes north of Highway 29. Okay, so uh, Highway 29 is, that's kind of part of my main drag home, so definitely don't like driving that when when there's weather we don't have loon well i mean maybe we do we don't have very prominent loons um here but further north they definitely have loons and oh yeah i love i love that loon sound too lots of other birds here though a lot of red-winged blackbirds and morning doves all those I saw, this morning, I saw a purple finch at the bird feeder. That was pretty. Going around and around this loop, just kind of turning the fabric as needed. Gosh, I actually don't think we're gonna get this one side done with, with, um, this thread. I thought we'd get up this whole thing and then back down a little bit. All right. Just relaxing to sit here and stitch. We got the little hammocks out that we could put between some trees. Uh, so my mom and I sat in the hammock a little today. It was just relaxing. How many, Joe's asking how many splendid sampler blocks I have left. I think I have around 30, to be honest. I, I think I do have quite a bit. Actually, you know what? I kind of want to count. Let's just count really quick. Here's my list of uh, done ones and not done ones. So I have some crossed out. Actually, I have a highlighter near, near, near me. I'm just going to 
highlight the ones we have done. So I've been I've been highlighting our finished ones. So anything that's not highlighted, I I don't have done yet. So one, two, three, four, uh, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. You know, twenty. I'm counting this one still twenty. So twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty, two, four, six, seven, eight, thirty-nine. So I have thirty-nine unfinished ones yet. Ugh, it's like never ending. <laughs> so well, we'll have thirty-eight when we're done with this one, but we're not. We won't get done with this this week. Um. Especially, there's actually quilting. I mean, there's actually sewing in this yet. We have a border to put on this. So this guy won't be done. So 39. Uh, but luckily, we are doing it quilt as you go. Oh, yeah, we could do a pop of color next time. Well, this is kind of our pop of color one almost. But, but yeah, we could do a fabric pop of color one. But yeah, we're, we're doing the quilt as you go method, um, which means we, we aren't waiting till the end to quilt it, to like sew our three layers of the front back and the batting together. We are doing that in smaller batches and then connecting them with like a binding strip just about. Um, it's basically the process. And... Uh, um, I'm going to do this guy here I think eh, no I'm gonna I'm gonna get the back stitching on this eh, I don't think we'll make it all the way around we might get close but yeah so I, I actually even though I have a lot of the blocks to do yet we actually are quite far on the quilt so we have you know I think about two I think we have two full strips uh, like 10 blocks across and two down. So 10 by two, I think we have two strips like that complete that we could put together and then like halfway through another one. So there'll be, the ultimately it'll be 10 blocks by 10 blocks. We're kind of doing them in groupings of, of two tall. So we're doing them in groupings of four. We're really actually quilting uh, four together. So like a square of four. And then sewing those squares of four together. So even if even though we have a lot to do on the blocks, once we're done, it, the rest of it will go really quick, and we'll all of a sudden have a finished quilt. So that's good. I'm relying on on that truth <laughs> uh, to to keep pushing me along on on all these blocks. All right. I think we're getting all these. I'm excited. We'll just have, like, I'll have just enough for this last stitch. We can weave in the end. And then I'll start up another, another piece. We'll get those three little guys there, and then we'll come down on this side. And, uh, we'll be done with the, the, um, oh, I wonder if I can get one more. Nah, I'm not gonna risk it. We'll be done with the cup part. So that'll be nice. Three, back and forth three times. Grab my scissors. Still looking nice on the back, I think. All right, let's get another piece out of here. Zoop. All right, we might still have to get more floss. I don't know, maybe we'll, I don't think we'll get through all of this, my remaining floss tonight, we'll see. So thanks again, everyone, for coming to hang out with me here uh, on location at my parents' house again this week. This is the longest we've been here in a long time, so it's been a nice little vacation. All right, I'm gonna go in the back of these stitches, I think. And then we're just gonna grab that loop, put the needle through the loop. Okay. One. 
Oops, I almost went to start the next one without tacking this one down. That would have been funny. Okay, we'll get this one. So let me know if any of you have uh, finished the raccoon sampler or gone through like our two weeks of um, videos on uh, on uh, stitching the stitches in the stamp in the sampler. I'd I'd love to hear what you think. Um, and then uh, I do want to do it in real life with you guys here too. So that'd be um, in our lives. So that'll be fun. Like I said earlier, I'll, I'll have to come up with a date and then we can plan for it. Uh, but yeah, that it's free to download at penguinandfish.com. All right, we got that center area done finally. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of weave into the back of these stitches and then start up this little area. I'll just go straight down. Weaving in the back. <laughs> Lynn's asking, did you go out for a good Wisconsin fish fry tonight? Uh, we, uh, we got fish fry and we brought it, uh, we brought it home. So we did have, we did have a good old traditional Friday night fish. We sure did. <laughs> it's a, a necessary huh, item when we come here for sure. So, yep. Good old Friday night fish. Fish. It's funny because that's such a thing here and then when I moved to Minneapolis it was like nothing like I didn't hear about that at all which is crazy because it was such a, such a big deal in Wisconsin. I think last weekend um, they went to a different place, but we went to a, a nearby place and got some and brought it back so we could all just chill out here and eat it together. Got the German potato salad. Friday night fish is basically fried perch, typically, I think, and, uh, uh, some German potato salad or other sort of potato and uh, coleslaw and some bread, basically. <laughs> but it's everywhere. Tons of places serve it. And um, it's just a thing you do on Fridays in Wisconsin is Friday night fish. You go chill out, eat some, eat some fish. All right, got that little sprig. That's actually cute. Just this little, little grouping there I kind of like. Okay, going around this little squiggle. Ooh, a new store opened here. Oh, and they have lots. Oh, that's nice that they have ice cream. Yeah, we got some ice cream today too. Or uh, had had some ice cream and a rip your float. <laughs> Bring your rip your floats again. Oh, this is German potato salad. It's the best. Love Friday night fish. Yep, gotta have it. This is our last squiggle. Oh, I guess we got like a half squiggle here. Our last little circle-y guy. Oh, actually, I think this is supposed to be a circle. I might be doing it a little weird. Oh yeah, I, I, I missed a stitch right here. One more stitch to finish that circle. I had to take a look quick at the, at the line art pattern.
if I have enough, like I think I might have a tiny bit of thread left, maybe I'll come back up here and finish that little arc um, that I ran out of thread earlier. Um, that'd be nice to just get that done. I don't know if I'll have enough thread, but, or floss, but I don't know. It's looking potentially promising. Oh, that's actually kind of a lot of stitches there. And eh, we might just have to pick that up in some other way later. Ran out of thread there a few nights ago. Uh oh, there. Felt like I got tied into a little knot there and I wasn't gonna make it to the end of that French knot, but I was able to pull it through. I think my needle just got stuck on something. There we are. That was the last of our French knots. I think this is gonna be our last lazy daisy, or our last um, single or detached chain stitch. So we're getting there. And our last little loopy bloop here. I'll have to take a picture of the monarch uh, caterpillars that my mom and dad collected this evening. <laughs> Whole pile of them already. Uh, so they have a little, one of those little nets that, you know, you can see them uh, turn into a chrysalis and, and monarch butterfly. All right, there we got that done. Nice. Okay, so I think I'm gonna weave in the end here. I don't know if we have enough thread to really do much with. Let's snip this and assess. Eh, yeah, I think I'm gonna just start fresh. It's just, I mean, I maybe have enough for a couple tiny stitches, but I mean, not, not really. I guess that was a little shorter than I thought. So, all right, we can start the the text now. Um, I think. I think I kind of want to just start from one side and work my way over. Uh, maybe once we get over here, I'll, I'll uh, come up and finish this little bloop. Um, but yeah, I guess, you know, why not just go from left to right? Grab another thread. It's nice to get that uh, whole big main area done though. So decorative, such a pretty, pretty cup. a little tangled here. Yeah, there. All right. So I think I'm going to just kind of grab this thread here and um, start start this text. Oh yeah, I think the blue, I think the blue is looking really nice too. So this isn't how the instructions have it. Like in the book, they have it a different color. Um, let's just take a peek quick. I think this is on page 93. Oh yeah, I have the other template in here. So here it is as the example. I mean, that's really pretty too, having um, the middle different colors. I mean, that is that is pretty, but there is something nice about an all blue design. It's pretty traditional. Uh, there's, it's actually called blue work when you stitch it all, all um, with, uh, with this kind of, this kind of color blue. Um, so I do like that, and this kind of feels like a traditional design, so it, it felt like it fit, and it, it's just pretty, and I like doing it. 
So vintage, yep, yep, exactly. Yeah, I wasn't so sure at the start either, Sylvia, but I, I do, I do kind of like how it's turning out here. Because it's always nice with lots of colors and stuff, but I don't know, there's something just classic about all blue. I, there's also like red work. Uh, that's probably a little bit more common maybe, but that's when, you know, the whole thing is stitched with just, just red. There's also black work and white work. I mean, you can do whatever you want, really, but those are kind of the traditional traditional ones. For the I Love Home quilt, I did it all in that, like, coral pink color, which is really fun. All those home embroideries. That is an unfinished project yet. We have to quilt that. I think it's actually all pinned together and everything. It just needs to be sat down and quilted. Gosh, I should do some Saturday stitch-alongs coming up here where I just quilt all day. Because I gotta get some of these guys done. There's, I think I have at least two quilts ready and prepared to quilt. Like actually, you know, pin together. All I need to do is start. Um, I suppose I gotta like decide what I'm doing for a design. But other than that, they're ready to go. And then at least, well, the the um, Granny Square quilt and the Aurifil quilt, those are just waiting on me to kind of finish the backs up, then pin together and quilt. So that's that's like four pretty close to ready things to quilt. And then there's always this this project, the Splendid Sampler 2 is, you know, always got a couple little little pieces to to quilt together. Ooh, Sylvia has all the parts together to quilt. Nice. Gonna start on Monday. That's awesome. Um, Gina's asking, will you be hand quilting the I Love Home? I hadn't planned on it. I wanted to actually, originally, my idea for quilting that one was, I mean, I've had a little bit more practice since this decision, but I still like the decision. It was to practice um, or, or do like some machine quilting. So just on my home machine, machine quilting where it focuses on the frame because it's kind of like that big embroidery of the house in the middle, but then there's like a really decorative frame on all of them. There's just four of these house blocks, uh, but they all have like a big frame. And I wanted to do something where we, uh, um, oh, <laughs> Grace, my mom's watching right now, so uh, she'll probably see that comment. I'll let her know though if she if she hasn't. Uh, but yeah, the um, the I Love Home has those borders, so I wanted to do like border focused embroider or like uh, machine quilting. So like you know like where I you know bloop around an edge, or maybe you know it has like a little decorative swirl within the row. I I wanted to be like. I, I want to, I have to do some research on it, uh, like what good like border quilting uh, would be. So I wanted to try, I wanted to practice that or like give that a go. So I, I still actually kind of, kind of like that idea because I've kind of just done overall quilting. Um, not really any planned out quilting like, okay, this border is going to do this and this and this. Um, you know, where I might have to sew and like sew all the squares first and then I do a decorative, decorative border next. Um, I wanted to dig into that sort of idea and I, and I still do actually like that idea because I have, I still haven't done that, like a focus on the borders. So nope, no hand quilting, I don't think. I could always change, uh, but that'll be focused on borders. The granny square quilt, I want to quilt how it shows in the example or in the project. Like there is actual quilting kind of design instructions in it, which are really feel advanced to me. <laughs> so that's going to be a huge, huge challenge, I think. Um, like there's, like, I don't know, it's kind of way different than what I've done. Like it's so decorative. 
these circles with these big bloops in, in, in every single granny square. So I mean, you know, I'm doing one and then I'm sort of committing. Uh, maybe I can start with just like every other one and then if I get tired of that, then I can always do something else in the, in the rest of the blocks. That might be a good strategy. But yeah, and then there's a very decorative border quilting. So I'm tempted to just do exactly what it showed in the instructions just to give it a try. I haven't haven't done that before where I'm kind of shown what to do for the quilting and then I then I do that design. I just kind of go wherever. So that's again, you know, a challenge. So I always have to have some sort of learning aspect or challenge or like experiment that I'm testing in all my things. I can't ever do anything just for, for fun. I always wanna like learn something. Like, cause that, to me, that's super exciting. So like just getting better at a technique or learning one new thing. I mean, then, then the project's worth it for me. So those are the objectives of those. And then for the the uh, um, triangle tango quilt, which is also ready, I wanted to draw out like a on, on like paper, <clears throat> or actually probably my iPad. I wanted to divide up the my drawing into like the squares, the, the amount of squares, the amount of blocks that the quilt is made up of. And then I wanted to draw like a whole design on like a whole scene. And then I wanted to transfer that like square by square onto the quilt and then quilt that. So like a whole scene that we try and get on, draw on the larger quilt. And I don't know, that seems a little intense and I haven't drawn that yet either. So that's in limbo because of that. But again, another thing I haven't tried with quilting I have some experiments lined up, but none of them are happening yet. But they're gonna have to soon. <laughs> I can't have these projects around anymore. I need to get some finished projects. Slow motion finishing my projects. That's what these good, um, these last weeks of the month are nice, gonna be nice for. And uh, the Finish It Fridays, that always moves things along. So that's nice. All these uh, letters have so many little curly cues. So around curves, I I make my stitches a little bit smaller. Um, so so my curves aren't so pointy. Like the more little straight marks you can make, uh, the more of a like gradual curve it'll be. So I'm doing a few more stitches than I would normally. Since there's so many of them, it's that's why uh, this text is going to take a little time. It might actually take two more sessions after tonight. I'm not. I'm not sure. But we still. We actually still have to cut this out and put that little tiny border on it. So there's there's a bit to do yet uh, with this block for sure. We're we're almost out of thread again too. So we'll be switching that up. I'm not doing so much of the sewing method anymore, just because I want to be more precise with with my thread, thread my needle placement early, I guess. I think we'll get most of this EU done. with the thread I've got. I feel like my, uh, man, I don't know. Hands are feeling a little tired this week uh, from all this embroidery. 
and we'll be doing some embroidery next week too so I'll have to remember to stretch so it was important to to stretch especially with this repetitive stress sort of stuff like embroidery but I definitely don't do it enough stretch the neck a little shoulders Yep, finish that guy. We're gonna get a little farther than I thought. Um, let's let's go straight down first. Might only get the first part of this P done. Oh man, you guys, I haven't did laundry today. I feel like I uh, did a lot of relaxing stuff and even got, you know, even got laundry done. That's a good day. All right, one more stitch here. Yeah, I think that's the, that's the most I can do here. I'm gonna weave in the end and we'll start fresh. Jeez, this was just one piece of floss, wasn't it? We started fresh, didn't we? Man, so we're only getting like three, or we're getting like five and a half letters done. So one, two, three, four, five. We'll probably, or wait, one, two, three, yeah, five and a half. So we'll probably get to, I don't know, maybe here, maybe the O with another whole thing of thread. So yeah, this is gonna, this is definitely using up the floss, all of this little type. All right, let's grab our next thread. Oh, I only have two left in this grouping. We'll see, we'll try and use them up tonight. Then we'll have to scrounge up some more blue for my scrapping. I'm gonna just go in the backs of some stitches here. Uh, and I'm gonna just jump from letter to letter. I don't care if you see the thread in the back. I think we'll be okay. curly Q here. Tiny little stitch for the last little bit. All right, let's jump over to this O. I'm just looking at the design. It actually is a little open top to this O, so I, I kind of closed it up when I traced it. I'm gonna leave it a little bit more open.
pretty. Yeah, the ni other nice thing about doing, it's actually faster to do like a blue work piece or a red work piece uh, than it is stitching normally. Cause first of all, you don't have to change colors ever. <laughs> so you're not like looking for other thread uh, ever. You just have the one ready to go all the time. Uh, you can start and stop easier because you don't have to like, you, you're not finishing like an area of another color and starting up a new color. So there's less starting and stopping in that sense too. And there's a whole lot less thinking. You can just let the brain wander a little bit. You don't have to watch where you're going. Like, oh, was it, was this part red or was this blue? Um, it's all just one color so you can zone out a little bit more so there are other benefits to doing blue work or the one color embroidery Some sewing methods, some stabbing methods still. Making it a little tighter in here again. Since I'm mostly doing the stabbing method. Yeah, exactly, Jenna. And you don't have to choose colors, so that's a whole uh, thing off the plate. I know that can be stressful. Um, it's stressful for me, and I know it can be stressful for other people, like having just to make that big decision of what color do I use. Um, you don't have to don't have to worry about that um, when you've done one color. It's just one decision then. Decision to just do blue worker all all one oh this is the tiniest little curly cue there's actually a little extra curl in here that i'm gonna get i think we'll use up this piece and do the one other piece and see how far that gets us for the night Tight little curl on here. I would love to do a whole quilt with um, embroidered blocks. Actually, I'd love to do like an embroidered scene. Like instead of blocks, it's just like one giant piece of fabric, like a whole cloth quilt, um, with, with, um, all like blue work or red work. It'd actually be neat to do like, like a red quilt, like red fabric with red work on it. Like just like one color, that'd be kind of just pretty and textural and subtle. I think it'd be a pretty project, but that sounds like a super long-term project. <laughs> And I'm kind of wanting, I'm kind of wanting to finish my long-term projects and do some quick, short, fun ones. I'd actually love to do some more zipper pouches. I've been kind of feeling that lately. You know, we got the swan one to finish and I'm kind of thinking it would be a fun thing. Uh, since we have, we have a lot of, um, Next month, we have a lot of extra weeks at the end of the month. Like we have a week and a split week. Um, but uh, 
Yeah, I was actually thinking we could do a, that, like maybe a zipper pouch of the next embroidery of the month. I thought that could be kind of fun. Like I could have zippers and stuff available, like a little bundle for uh, making a pouch uh, live, like a materials bundle. But I don't know, let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. Like we would stitch the embroidery of the month you know, in the third week of the month, like we normally do. But then we we would have a whole fourth week to do whatever we wanted. And we could have a little zipper pouch uh, so along, I thought, from the embroidery. That might be kind of a neat, neat idea. Playing around with it, we'll see. But yeah, let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. Like if we stitch, just in general, like if we stitch our embroidery of the month, and then like make it into something right away. Be kind of fun. I think we'll, I think we got, oh, even less far. So we just have one, two, three, we'll be like halfway through this fourth one. I don't think we're going to finish this M. So man, it's almost like we had less floss in this one. The letters just took up more, more jumps between letters and the letters just took up a lot of, a lot of juice this time, I guess. Little change in hand position, so going horizontal now. Oh, Colleen says, yes, the zipper pouch would love. All right, that's good to know. Yeah, I mean, how I was thinking of doing it is, I mean, we would stitch the design and then I'd have a, like a materials bundle available. So like, you know, some extra fabric for the back, some lining fabric and, and like a zipper. Uh, and then you could use your own stuff, but we could, you, if you wanted just the materials bundle and it wouldn't have instructions or anything, it wouldn't be like a kit. Uh, but it would be just supplies if you wanted it for that week and we all uh, stitch it together during during the lives It would be just something simple like that. I'm thinking Ooh, I'm not gonna have enough for this loop. I'm gonna actually finish this thread right here last stitch with this one and we'll Switch it to the next And the next one will be our last one for the night. Because after that, I gotta search out for more. All right, here we go. in the back. Okay, I think I missed the story about the bear too, so <laughs> I must have been looking down and stitching, so did a bear chase someone? Is that like what I'm what I'm uh, sort of catching? I'll have to read through the comments again when we're done here. Because that sounds super scary. Oh my gosh, yes, all fine. Oh my gosh, Sylvia. <laughs> uh, 
Wow. I have not had that experience before. Glad everyone's okay. Eee! This curly Q letter M is kind of pretty. I like it. Easier to hold sideways. I'm going to do that. Oh, Sylvia said it's an Alaska thing. Oh my gosh. Wow. We just have Chad Kitty walking around. No, no bears. Not that I think, not that I know of at least. Yeah. I think we can have them a little further north in Wisconsin, but I've never, never ever seen one in the wild. All right, let's do this guy quick. We're gonna just keep twisting around. I'm gonna try and do a little bit more of the sewing method. Or maybe not, that's being a little annoying. Oh my gosh, Silly says, I think the neighbor's dog got it angry and you're in the way. Oh God. on the T. Jump up to the H. Well, I think we're getting quite a bit of the text done tonight, but I mean, you can definitely see this is this uh, text. There's so much going on with it and there's so much of it that it's it's actually it's taking a while. We're really filling in a space here um, with stitches. So if you think about it that way, how many stitches are in this small little space? Uh, we got a little ways to go yet. But we're definitely getting there maybe one more session one more pretty hardcore session uh focus section session on um embroidery we'll we'll probably get this text done and then i'm pretty confident we're going to be able to sew the rest in one one evening and maybe even start another one so uh we'll finish this up next month and uh, next month, the second week of the month when we work on this project. And that'll be great. Then we'll be down to 38 more to do. <laughs> so still just a little over halfway, I think. I guess three fifths of the way almost. Or just about. Oops, I almost lost my thread. Let's get that back on. Now 
actually borrowing my mom's hoop from her uh, raccoon sampler kit. <laughs> I realized I didn't bring a hoop with me, but I brought, brought her the kit, so I am poaching it for the week. Yeah, I hope, uh, I know a bunch of you got your embroidery of the months and everything already. I hope you like our new uh, packaging. Uh, we've been working on that for a little while. Uh, so we're, we're excited for that. New packaging to go with the new website. Alright, last little stitch on this E. Uh, I think we'll be able to finish this R and a portion of the S. Eh, maybe not any of the S, actually, now that I pull that through. But this R, I'm thinking, will be good. little curly cute. Maybe I can get the apostrophe done. Well this is actually a nice place to end um, in this area because now we can easily kind of pick up these little this little part that I missed there. I didn't miss I just ran out of floss and started somewhere else. Um, but we'll be able to just like after the S and the L just kind of hop up there quick and, and get that. I, and I'll know that I'll have enough thread for it because that's just, um, that'll just be at the beginning of our next piece of floss. A few more stitches. We are going to end right after an hour. So like an exact hour of stitching. Uh, is how much thread I had available tonight before I have to search some more out. Okay, so I think I'll be able to do this little apostrophe. We'll do him in three stitches, I think, to get this little curve. Eh, maybe just two. Two is fine. Ooh, I think I might actually be able to get a few more. We won't get this whole S, but we'll get a bunch. Actually, yeah, there's, there's so many curves in this that I don't think we'll get the whole thing. Just barely though. That'll be good though. It'll be clear where we should begin next then. Finishing the text and finishing that loop. Actually, it'd be awesome if I could finish this S because then I can start on the other side of this loop here. Yep, we're getting this whole S. Ha <laughs> ha! Always nice to win some thread chicken for the night. Just barely though. Yeah, I'll get this one more stitch. Weave in that end. Good, now I can start on the other side of that uh, steam swoosh. That's the technical term for <laughs> the steam coming out of the coffee, I think. All right, so there we are. It's coming along. 
And if I tighten this in the hoop a little bit better, I think um, the shape of the mug will improve a little bit as well. Very pretty. Okay, definitely very happy with going uh, all blue on this. So yeah, so this is a, probably one more session worth, but I mean, it'll take the whole hour, I think, probably to do that text. And then um, the next day we will chop it all up and put our little border on. So, all right, that will be next month uh, when we work on this project here. So I'm gonna flip you guys around. All right. Oh yeah, it could be tea. If I, I keep saying coffee cup, uh, but yes, it's more of a like a fancy tea cup there. But oh, it's looking so pretty. I love uh, all the texture in it. Uh, that's the fun part about embroidery, just all the texture. I'd probably um, just pull this a little bit lower um, there. Now it is kind of rounding it out a little bit more. Pretty. All right. So next time we'll be working on that type. Uh, great. And next time is next month. So next week, uh, we'll be, I'll be back, uh, at my, in my normal studio, uh, at home and, uh, we will be starting to stitch the hummingbird embroidery. So this is a really another, it kind of, uh, it kind of goes with this one. They're both feel like very kind of vintagey classic designs. Um, so that is the plan coming up for next week. Uh, so awesome. So great. It was nice to have you here with me uh, on location at my parents house. It's always fun doing this here and um, Thanks for chatting everyone. Have a fabulous weekend and I'll see you again on Monday. Good night